Transition uh, here right now and seeing people in the church that I knew back then and I'm just so thrilled what God has done in their lives because they grab hold of the word here at For His Glory and they've just grown. Amen? Amen. I remember one particular sister I'm looking at right now. I remember her son. He's way up here now and I look at him when he's up on the wish and praise team and I remember he was about this tall when I first came here. But that brother, he don't, he don't sprout it up, praise God, you know. Somebody said, that, that, that's not much trouble getting taller than you, Pastor Hamer. So. But anyway, I was so thrilled just seeing her and many others as you have abounded in the word of God. You have abounded in the love of God because of your believing and receiving the word of God. Uh, Paul talked about it in 1 Thessalonians, I believe it is in the second chapter. He said, when you receive the word of God from us, you receive it not as the words of mere men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which will effectively work in you that believe it or receive it. Amen? Amen. And that's the same thing will happen to you this morning. If you receive the word of God from me, not as the words of a mere man, but as it is in truth, the word of God, it will effectively work in you for those of you that receive it and act upon it. Amen? Amen. So we're going to be starting a lesson uh, this morning. Uh, I prayed that the Lord, what I, what I can minister and stuff, I have a lot of stuff I can minister on, but I wanted a word, a present word, a manner for you this morning. So he gave a message called Knowing the Important Things in Life. Knowing the Important Things in Life. Now, before we preface and go to our main subject, our main scripture, which is Isaiah, the 55th chapter, verses 8 to 11, I want you to turn with me over to 1 Timothy, the third chapter, and we want to look at a particular scripture here. I always like to preface uh, my teachings uh, with this particular verse of scripture. It's given me a great revelation, knowledge of the truth of God's word. But in, I said 1, Corinthians, uh, 1 Timothy, but it's 2 Timothy, chapter 3, and verses 16 and 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. If you got in there, say amen. amen. If you hadn't, say old me. I'm getting there. No old me. I can't walk around too much I'm with these, these modern team speakers. All right, now look at verse 16 in the book of 2 Timothy. Now remember, the Bible is God's word speaking to us. Here in 2 Timothy, verse 16 and 17, let's read it out loud together. Everyone, you may have a different translation, but don't worry about it. You all, we're all going to come at this, arrive at the same juncture when we get to the end of the verse 17. Ready, go. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, Truly furnish unto all good works. Now I want you to notice something this is about what these verses of Scripture says to us. It says all Scriptures. Now all means what? All. all, right? That means from the book of generations to the book of revolutions. Amen? <laughs> so what kind of preacher came here to preach this morning, huh? Well, no, it's just Genesis to the book of Revelations. But it says all scriptures given by the inspiration of God, which means that God inspired the scriptures to be written. It wasn't just written because some man sit down one day and decide to write some words and, and all of a sudden they, you wrote them and put them together and then all somebody over here did it. No, all scriptures were given by the inspiration of God. God inspired men to write it. And then it says the reason why he did it was, it says inspiration of God and it is what? Profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, and for instructions in righteousness. Now the word doctrine means the established order of God. That's what do doctrine means, the established order of God. So God's word was given because God has an established order how he does things in the church. Now all this chaotic stuff that's been going on, maybe places that you visited and places you heard about, that is not the work of God. That's the work of men not following the instruction book, which is the Bible. Because the Bible is God's instruction book. Amen? Amen? And it's given by the inspiration of God for the established order of God, for doctrine. And then it says for reproof, which simply means, it means the dismantling of erroneous thinking. Amen. Because a lot of times we come into the body of Christ, we have this idea of how things should be done in the church. Or we hear from somebody else that, you know, maybe overheard a conversation. Maybe great-grandma or grandma or, 
or you know, Uncle Bartholomew or whoever it was, and we get this wrong, erroneous thinking about the kingdom of God, God's ways and God's thinking and God's plans and God's purposes. So the Bible was given so that it can correct us, reproof. I could tell it down from my mind. And then it says for, uh, uh, for reproof and for correction. Correction means the assimilation of God's truth into your thinking. That's what correction does. It gives assimilation, God's truth into your thinking. And then it comes to the word instructions in righteousness. Instructions in what? Instructions in righteousness. Now, we're not going to turn there, but you can look at it later on. But in the book of Matthew, I believe it is, in the third chapter, it talks about how Jesus well, came from Galilee. He was in Galilee. He was there living, whatever. And he left from Galilee, and all of a sudden, he went to Jordan. And when he got there, he ran. He went, went and found one person in Jordan. That was John the Baptist. And the Bible says he went there so that he could be baptized of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist, who knew what Jesus was, who knew what, who Jesus was you know, because he was Jesus' PR man. I call him his public relations man because he said, here is the Lamb of God that cometh to take away the sins of the world, whose shoes I'm not worthy to latch or tie or whatever, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So finally, Jesus comes to him and Jesus says, well, I come to be baptized by you, John. And John says, wait a minute, Jesus. You come to me for me to baptize you? I know who you are. You are the son of God. You are the creator of the universe. And you come to me for me to baptize you? And Jesus said one word to John the Baptist after he put on all that. He says, allow it. Now, the King James says suffer, but if suffer really means allow. He says, allow it to be so now so that all righteousness can be fulfilled. The Bible says when he had done this, that is, he became baptized, when he came up out of the water, the Bible says the Holy Spirit came, uh, 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 came upon him as a dove. And the voice of God came from heaven and said, Behold, this is my beloved Son, of whom I am well pleased. Amen? Amen. And then some more things. Well, what, was that, what was it that God was pleased with? What would Jesus said to John the Baptist to get John the Baptist to do what God wanted him to do? He says, it is necessary for us to fulfill all righteousness. That is, God told Jesus to leave Galilee, to go to Jordan, to John the Baptist, not to Steve, not to Martin, not to Philip, but to John the Baptist to be baptized by him. And when he fulfilled the will of God by obeying what God wanted him to do, God, it, was, it was called righteousness, which is doing things the way God wants things to be done. Amen? That's what righteousness is. So the instructions in righteousness in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, when it says instructions in righteousness, it means instructions in doing things the way God wants things to be done. That's what the Bible is given for. It is given as a what? An instruction book. Amen? So this is our instruction book, and that's what we're about ready to delve into, and that is the instruction book, which is God's holy word. Now, have you found Isaiah, the 55th chapter, or did I tell you to do it? I don't know if they have it on the board up there on the screen. Isaiah 55, verses 8 to 11. We have many scriptures that we're going to be turning to, not a whole lot, but we're going to be turning to a number of scriptures, but then that's the plan of God. That's how God wanted to establish the church. When he told Peter, when Peter says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus turned around and says, Simon Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven, and upon this rock, the revealing or revelation knowledge of God's word, shall I build my church. Amen? So we have to go to just more than one scripture. As the scripture says, study to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I always say, you can't divide by one, can you? Amen. Now you may do fractions, but we're not talking about fractions. We're talking about whole numbers. Amen. Amen. So in Isaiah 55 chapter verses 8 and 11, if you're there, say amen. amen. If you're not, say, oh me, I'm getting there. All right. Verse number 8. Now notice what God says in his word. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. Let's read verse 11 out loud together. So shall my word be, that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing or two I sent it. Now listen to this. 
it is imperative for every believer to come to this revelation about God and his word. If you are a believer and have not understood this truth from the word of God, then you will always have issues in your life, in your Christian walk, for the rest of your life here on this earth. And you will never come into your full inheritance that God has intended for you before you were born again. God said in Isaiah 55, he says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It will not return to me void, but it will accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper in the thing whereto you sent it. Now, a lot of times people don't think, you know, say, well, you know, that word doesn't work. I tried it, it don't work. Oh, no, it, it worked. It worked. You just didn't recognize that it, it, uh, it working because the Bible says this, you know, you, it says in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, and Minister Mike used that this morning. He says, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he saith. In the book of Proverbs, I think it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Well, some people says, well, you know, I tried that faith stuff. I tried that confession stuff, and it don't work. Oh, yeah, it's working. Amen. You can look at your life and the words that you say. Every time you talk about, I ain't got enough, I can't do this, you know, they always, they always put me down. I don't have this. I'm sick. I feel this. I'm going to get the Hong Kong flu. You're getting what you say. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So it works whether you, be whether you believe it works or not. It is working for you. Amen? The Bible says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man, whatsoever man soweth, so shall he reap. He that soweth to the flesh shall the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the spirit shall the spirit reap the blessings of eternal life. That works. Because if you just constantly sow into your flesh, you constantly in strife, you constantly in unforgiveness, you're constantly being a glutton, or whatever it may be that you're doing, what you're sowing in your flesh you are reaping right now. So it does work, amen? amen? So shall his word be that goeth forth out of his mouth. It shall not return to God void, but it will accomplish that which it please, and it will prosper in the thing where to you sent it. See, you have to believe that verse of Scripture because God's word is eternal. It's not a temporary, it's not a, it's not a magazine. It's not a novel. You know, you get a novel, you read a novel that's popular for that month or for that six months, but later on the novel, the popularity is gone. You get a magazine and you read it, you got new articles in the magazine. Some of you probably got old magazines sitting in, sitting in your, your, your magazine rack. How many you got old magazines? Read maybe about five, six months ago, a year ago, but sitting there. All that information is old information, but not the Word of God. It is eternal, amen? And that's why it is important for you as a Christian to know this, to be established in this truth that God's Word does not return to him void. It will accomplish what, it, what he, he chooses or what he pleases. Amen. It will prosper in the thing where he sent it. Now turn to another verse of scripture. Turn to Matthew's, the 24th chapter, and look at verse number 13. Now there are more than one scriptures, Matthew's 24, 13, Mark 13, 31, and Luke 21, 33. It's saying the same thing, but we're just going to look at Ma Ma Matthew's 24, 13 so you can hear something that Jesus, the Son of God, God himself manifests in the flesh, when he came down to the earth, he made this statement in Matthew 24, 13. If you're there, say amen. amen. If you're not, say oh me like me, because I haven't got there yet. Any other old me's out there? I was finna say, hurry up, slow poke. <laughs> now look at verse number 13. Well, let's read it out together. together. Ready, go. You know what? I got the wrong verse of scripture. Go to Mark 13, 31. I was typing this out. I got the wrong verse of scripture. Ooh, praise the Lord. Go to Mark, go to Mark 13, 31. My wife was supposed to be editing my, my notes last night. Oh, Adam, huh? There Adam go. Girl, Adam, dear Adam. That Adam syndrome, brother, I tell you. <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> Woo, boy, I'm gonna be in trouble when I get home. <laughs> No, she's, she's going to forgive me, praise God. <laughs> I'm saying that by faith. Huh? <laughs> Look, Mark 13, 33. Mark 13, 33. Uh, yeah, 13, 31, excuse me. Mark 13, 31. You got it? Let's read that out loud together. Ready, go. Heaven and earth shall pass away, 
but my word shall not pass away. Now, he said that also in Matthew, the 13th chapter, or 24th chapter somewhere, he also said in Luke 21, 33, but notice what Jesus said. He says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. In other words, Jesus said, you can bet your bottom dollar on my word. You can bet your bottom dollar on God's word. If he said it, he will perform it. I think Jeremiah said, I watch up over my word to perform it. In other words, he said, I watch up over my word to bring it to pass. Amen? Yes. So you can bet your bottom dollar on God's word that what he said, he will bring it to pass. All you got to do is just believe it. Can you say amen? amen. All you got to do is believe it. See, our ways and our thoughts as men, and unfortunately, and you have to develop yourself to to come to a place where your word is your bond. Do you know somebody who once they give you a word that you can bet your bottom dollar on it? You know somebody like that? Huh? Once you are that way, huh? So you say, I'm that way. That's good. Some people are not that way. They'll tell you one thing and praise God, next thing you know, they're doing something different. They make you a promise and before you know it, you say, what about that promise you made? Well, you know, but God is not that way. His promises are yes, and amen. Amen? I'm talking about God's word that went forth out of his mouth. He said, it will not return to me void. It will accomplish that which I please. It will prosper in the thing whereto he sent it. The only thing we have to do is what? Believe his word, receive his word, and act upon it. Amen? All right, let's look at another verse of scripture. Let's go over the book of 1 Peter, the 12th chapter. Uh, 1 Peter, uh, the first chapter, and look at verses 22. Look at verse 22. 1 Peter for chapter 1. Woo! Praise the Lord. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. These are something that you must get down into your spirit that you know that God's word is eternally established in heaven and earth and up under the earth. Amen? His word will not return to him void. Have you found 1 Peter, the first chapter? Verse number 22. Notice what it says. This seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Man, I find that is a, uh, an intricate web uh, all through the scriptures about loving the brothers, loving the sisters. Talk about the body of Christ. Amen? That's something very serious to God. In fact, Jesus, when he was on the earth, he said, this new commandment I give unto you that you do what? That you do what? That you fuss with one another. That you have strife among one another. That you get in division with one another. No, he said that you love one another. And he said, by this shall all men know that you're my disciple. Amen? That's just a little side journey right there. But look at verse number 23. He says, being, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever, forever, forever. This Bible, this word lives and lives forever. Can you say amen? amen. I don't care. You can, whatever philosophy you ever heard or any other kind of religion you probably learned about, those religions and philosophies shall pass away one day. But this word, God's word, liveth and abideth forever. Can you say amen? amen? Now let's look at another verse of scripture. Go to the book of Psalms 10720. Psalms 10720. Oh, praise God for the word. Amen. This is established doctrine. This is established truth. God does things according to his word. Psalms 107.20. If you're there, say amen. amen. If you're not, say oh me. Somebody said, Pastor, you ain't going to trick me on that one, huh? Okay. All right, I still hear pages turning, praise God. All right, Psalms 107.20. Let's read that verse of scripture out loud together. Ready to go. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent his word to do what? 
and healed them and delivered them from them. Have you noticed something there? That it didn't say from destruction. It says destructions. Did you see that? Listen. God sent his word with a purpose in mind. That is to heal and deliver men from destructions. Destructions. That covers the whole spirit of man's life. Whatever thing in your life that's causing destruction, then God's word was sent to deliver you from that situation. Listen. Turn to Luke, the seventh chapter. God's word was sent to deliver you from your destructions. Not just one situation, but any. If you have multiple dis, uh, destructive things happen in your life, poverty, sickness, bad relationship, you know, self-lower esteem, whatever it may be in your life, then God's words were sent so that he could deliver you from that destructive lifestyle. Look at Luke, the seventh chapter, verse 19. Luke, the seventh chapter, verse number 19. Now, I'm a pastor and a teacher, so when I minister, I teach. I give you information from the scriptures. Now, I can get, I can get stirred up and start waving my arms and shouting and screaming, but that's not what God has called me to do. You need information, praise God, to take with you so you can act upon. Luke, the seventh chapter, verses 19. I remember reading this verse of scripture some, some time ago, years ago, and I, I couldn't understand something in one of the particular verses when what Jesus is saying, and uh, we'll, I'll bring it, bring it out to you in a moment. If you're there in verse uh, chapter 7, we want to start at verse number 19. And John calling unto him two of the disciples sent them to Jesus, saying, um, John the Baptist did it because he had gotten locked up and, you know, and he was put in prison by Herod and everything. And so he was kind of getting a lot of, little weary and stuff. He knew because God had revealed it to him when he was in his mother's womb that Jesus was the Messiah, that he was a Lamb of God that came to take away the sins of the world. But he was going through these problems, these situations. So he sent his disciples to ask Jesus this question. And it says in verse 19, And John calling unto him two of his disciples sent unto Jesus, saying, Are you he that should come, or look we for another? He became, you know, beginning to get, become a little doubtful about whether Jesus was the Messiah because he had gotten locked up. You know, when you get in trouble, sometimes you wonder, well, I wonder if God's word is, you know, really working for me, or did God really hear my prayer? Because, you know, you're looking at the circumstances and still keeping your eyes on the word. Because the Bible does tell us that while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are what? Temporal, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. Another scripture says, cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense and reward, for you have need of patience, that after you have acted on the word of God, you will receive the promise. Amen? So there's a time between the time you believe you're receiving the manifestation, you start looking at the circumstances instead of looking down the line, saying, I know that God's word is true. It won't return to him void. He said, believe I've received when I prayed, and I shall have them. Well, I'm going to believe I've received no matter what the circumstances look like. Amen? Amen? That's what God's word tells us. Well, John the Baptist began to become a little weary, so he sent two of his disciples to Jesus. Now look at verse number 20. It says, when the men would come unto him, they said, they said John the Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, are you he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind, he gave sight. In other words, he was confirming God's word, or God was confirming Jesus' word with signs and wonders following. Amen? Because Jesus said at one time, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and has anointed me to preach the gospel, to bring recovery to the blind, to bring uh, 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 deliverance to the captive, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You remember that? When Jesus said that by himself? And then the scripture in the book of Acts 10, 38 said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Amen? Amen? So this was him doing those things because he was anointed with the Holy Ghost when he had got baptized by John the Baptist in the river Jordan. So notice what happened. Then Jesus answered and said unto them. He didn't answer them right away. He went about doing what God had called him to do. That is, delivering the captives, setting the captives free, opening the blind's eyes, healing the lame. And so he says to them in verse 22, Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, 
the leprous are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. But wait a minute. I had gotten stumped on this particular verse of scripture because I read what Jesus told the disciples of John. He said, go back to John and tell him what things you have seen and heard, how that the blind see. Well, of course, if you're blind, then what do you need, to, what do you need from Jesus? You need what? You need sight, right? And then he turned around and Jesus says, the lame walk. Well, if you're lame and crippled, what do you need? What do you need? You need to be healed, amen? And then he turned around and Jesus said, he says, uh, uh, the lepers are clean. So if you got leprosy, blood disease, what do you need? You need what? You need healing, right? I mean, it don't take a rock of science to understand that. And then he said, the deaf hear. If you deaf, then what do you need? You need your ears healed, amen? Maybe you need your eardrums recreated again. Something about your hearing in your ear that needs to be healed or a miracle done inside of it, right? And the Jesus said that the deaf hear, and then he says, the dead are raised. Well, if you're dead, what do you need? <laughs> it's obvious you need to be raised from the dead, amen? But what was so un what was so was was so so strange was he says to the poor the gospel is preached. Now wait a minute, wait a minute, Jesus, you the poor to the poor the you gave the blind the, uh, the ability to see you you cause the deaf to be able to hear the lame you raised up and you don't you don't cause their legs or whatever it was that was that was malfunctioning you cause that to be healed. And then those who were dead, you raised from the, But the poor, you preach the gospel to them, Jesus? Wait a minute, Jesus. Something got to be wrong with you. See, you can go and you can tell somebody to come to, I know I've had the opportunity to do some counseling and people having issues in their lives. My wife has had the same thing because, you know, she's a, been a minister of the gospel a long time and, you know, and paid staff in the, the ministry that she came out in in uh, Flint, Michigan, and, and people come with issues in their life. And so we said, okay, uh, we listen to them. We let them tell them what's going on. And we said, okay, well, let me give you the answer. And they get really, you know, elated. They smile and say, oh, praise God. And we open the Bible. And when we open the Bible, they say, oh. <laughs> and we tell them what God's word says about their situation. They say, I already heard that before, Pastor. That's what so-and-so told me. Why you got to give me the Bible? Jesus said the poor have the gospel preached unto them. See, they don't realize what Isaiah 55 says in verse number 11. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper in the thing which I sent it. Look, oh, Psalms 107.20 says he sent his word to do what? He sent his word to do what? to heal them and deliver them from their destructions. Remember we read in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, it says all scripture is given by the inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, established order of God, how God does things, reproof, dismantling of error thinking, correction, the assimilation of the truth of God's word into your thinking, and then instructions in how God does things or how he wants you to do things in your life. And they get upset because we want to give you the word. You fail to realize that this word contains all that you need to have a prosperous and successful life. The Bible, the God's word. Amen? Now, now let's establish this truth. Because, see, the teaching and the preaching of the gospel to the poor is not for entertainment or religious purposes, but God's purpose for the word is to deliver the believer, to deliver people. Amen? That's the purpose, not for me to get up here and entertain you by some oratory ability, some flamboyant whatever people do. I mean, you, you name it. They, it's a lot of it going on. That's not the purpose of the gospel. Can you say amen? amen? So let me show you another scripture. Let me prove it by the word. Praise God. 
Now let's go over to, uh, let's go over to, uh, praise God. <laughs> Woo, let's go over to the book of Romans, the first chapter. And this don't bless you, boy, I don't know what will. That's Romans, the first.